You're not going to believe how this hoof turns out. What a disaster this is. With all this digging, you'd think I'd be an archaeologist by now. Finally, I've made it to the center of the foot where that frog's located. And you can really see here that it's just, at this point, it's just kind of garbage. Good news is, is once I start to really clean it up, here I'm removing old shedded frog. And I can tell that it's shedded because at some point I'm going to show you that that old frog is actually melded into the bars of this hoof. But before I can even get to that, it's time to start taking hoof out. And I know the breed of this horse. I know the length of the hooves, the average length. So you can see right here, I'm just going to start digging my nippers in and I hate to say it like this, but ripping and tearing. Um, really getting as off as much material as I can because you're seeing this foot, the other foot actually has an abscess in it. So I have a limited amount of time. I'm able to hold this up each time while this horse is in a little bit of pain. So you see I'm being really aggressive. And I'm going to show you something a little bit different. I'm only going to trim half this hoof starting in the center because I'd like you to get a good view of how much material I'm taking off. Finally, I'm getting that piece that's broken off there. Man, I'm just ripping in terror. There ain't no better way to say it than that. If my nippers can grab it, I'm taking it at this point. And I'm still trying to work on gaining the balance of this hoof. Now you can see this horse has got tired at this point. Now I'm just gonna continue working toward that center. Just taking as much as I can. Let me see, I'm, now you see how I'm turning my nippers there? Things start to go a little bit south. He can't hold his foot up any longer and he fights and struggles and he takes it back. Every hoof specialist and horse owner is cringing for all kinds of reasons, but you darn well know a toe landing like that could have possibly broken my foot. And then we'd have two bad hoofs. So now that I'm there, I'm gonna show you how much I've taken. Look at that. Can you see at the toe? Just that's about an inch and a half probably. I'll say that's about three or four months of growing material. So I'm gonna start back. And I hate to say ripping and tearing, but at this point in the trim, it's definitely what you'd call rough because I'm trying to work as quick as I can, take as much material as I can, and of course, begin to seek balance, explore the hoof. Well, look at that just popping off, just going straight into the sole. So much material is just coming out. It's like a gift that keeps on giving. And you know, look at me working to the back of the hills there. That's just a lot of material to keep taking. So I'm just reaching in and grabbing the sole. That's actually old sole. And you know, I demonstrate often that false sole. Yes, that could probably be part of this, but at this point, it really hasn't um, melded into one single piece in order to just pop out like I like. Oh, and interesting, remember when I told you at the beginning of the video that there was a shedded frog melded to the bars? Can you see that there's the center frog and there's actually the separate frog pieces like the outline that i'm just taking out like the top came off and it's left like nearly like a capsule so that frog sort of encapsulated and i have to get that old frog out i have to get those old pieces of the frog out that shedded and we're going to return this hoof back to a place of functionality and you remember as i talk i use the words ripping and tearing to begin now we start getting into some of our finer work we start approaching places where um, flesh and blood can be located and at this point I'm also using an extremely sharp knife but if you saw my arms and you know where it's uh, slipped I can just tell you that it's surgically sharp and I'm just going to keep reaching and digging and now I think I'm beginning to start working on um, the development of the Mustang roll believe it or not and yes I know I'm still taking a ton of material here um, but do you see that I'm cutting it more at an angle now with my nippers and it should be noticed people are going to be like hey how come it doesn't use a hoof pick first normally i do but but this horse's hoof really just required me to just jump in and start removing material and cutting as soon as possible i know i have a limited amount of time so i do have to listen to his body he needed to put that foot back down and now he's wondering who took his high heels away and now look where we're at do you see how nice and clean that hoof is now I'm going to start cutting around those edges. Start placing that Mustang roll on there. I'll hold those nippers at, I'll just say nearly a straight up and down angle. Because my secondary angle that I'll end up achieving will be with my rasp. And you see how I just start cutting? All my tools are surgical and razor sharp.
I always run the smoother side of the rasp around that hoof first. And then I flip it and start using the coarse, rougher side of the rasp. And that really just lets me take more material. And my rough cuts are usually pretty precise. Then a couple swings with that smooth side. That thing's just sweet now. Functional, ready to heal and rock and roll.